This week I spent some time at the top of the water tower contemplating life. I spec and order a new car and my head of operations goes for a job interview at another firm. I'm Daniel Nasashville Wheatley, episode 150. Oh, really? Yeah, he took it in there. Apparently, the, the arms don't work. It's sent, and, uh, sent to it, man. It's all fixed now. So. so, what did you have to go then into Scania? Yeah, went in there, sat there and waited while they've done it. Ah, yeah. oh, all right. It's Monday and I'm in the yard, not Monday morning, but it's Monday. Skip Rory went to do a job this morning, broke down on the job, managed to get it into Scania and they've been repairing it. The time now is 4.27. We have one, two, three grabs lined up all ready for the morning. I assume these loads are going out first thing. You saw in previous weeks, we were reading the incoming power coming to the yard. Well, we had it in the second incoming in the railway yard. And now Mikey's gonna take off that gear. We're going to extract all the data and we're gonna see exactly how much power we are drawing. I believe the main thing what's drawing the power is this wheel wash, which we actually needed to give a clean this morning because over 160 loads went out on Saturday just gone and the wheel wash was relatively dirty. Rhyme are in the yard. They're doing some upgrades to the Scania volumetrics, which have the Rhyme bodies on the back. Each cab has a printer in it. We're having the new printer with the new cable connection. So when we go to jobs, we can give more information, like exactly how much sand, exactly how much stone, exactly how much cement and the water ratio and whether you had any add mixtures. We had them already, but these are the new ones. Time to go and check what's going on in the Olympic container. The plan today was to open up the roof and fix that area, but we can't as it's raining. So we're gonna clean the floor area and prepare it so we can seal it. Also, uh, we're gonna remove any rust from the steels on the outside, because it's only drizzling, and then we're gonna give those a lick of red oxide also. Tomorrow, if it's not raining, we'll do the roof. If not, we'll start to seal up the floor. had a Zoom earlier talking to a company in the north of the country about specialist decorative aggregates. It's something that we are gonna begin focusing on. Things like Plum Slate, but these products are very specialist and they're not available in the media area. So we're gonna begin to start importing them by rail, but we're gonna bring trains in and we're gonna have two wagons of one, three wagons of another, two wagons, because we don't want any one train of any specific material because we're not gonna shift it that quickly. Aside from that, still having conversations about intermodal. If you've been watching, you know what that word means. Anyway, it means running containers in here, offloading and distributing in the local area on skeletal trailers. There's a lot of talking going on. There's not a lot of doing and the talking happens before the doing. So hopefully these conversations and discussions we're having can develop and we can begin to put a plan in place and start using our railhead for more than just aggregate importation. A lot of bags in this area waiting to go out. Now I'm going to get myself changed because I've managed to get drenched. As wonderful as this t-shirt is, it is not waterproof. And I've been walking around without the Asheville umbrella. We have a client meeting at the refurbishment project tomorrow and David and I need to prepare for it. Kitchen layout, but get the utility layout confirmed. We're going to talk about the electrical upgrade. I spoke with this guy, you, you know what he told me, if you, you get for example, sometimes if there's an organization who's looking after the area, yeah. they are being told that they cannot just patch up one meter of road. They need yeah. to take everything out. Really? And do it nicely. It is only one patch in the whole road when I checked this. So you're saying because of the local residents around there, rather than just dig a trench, the people who live in the area may say, no, 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 pull up the whole road. He suggested to speak with the management company first. What do we want agreed on the bathrooms? The master bathroom, I've got all tiles which are on the mm. renders. And tap, tap finishes. Yeah, I've got this as well. <sighs> I'm going down there myself. It's Tuesday morning, I'm in the yard. Unfortunately this morning, somehow his driver window exploded. He was round the corner from the 15 million pound house. So he managed to nurse it back safely. Fortunately, he's okay, he's got no cuts, but we need to get someone round to the property ASAP to fix that. How are we doing? Speaking of fixing, we have more tire work to do because there is a puncture on a tipper. Did 
some interviews this morning and we're interviewing for free roles at the moment but more specifically the social media role when trying to hire <laughs> For me, sometimes it's very complicated because when you interview someone for a bagged aggregate sales role for plant hire sales, and then you interview someone else for a social media role to repurpose all of our existing content and put it on platforms like Facebook, Snapchat, and TikTok, things that we don't have time to do. Uh, sometimes I need to quickly like, give myself a slap, refocus, because the roles require different energy. But one challenge we're coming up against with the social media role is that people were saying that they can work other places and they can work from home and that they'll be like fantastic for the job and they believe in their abilities they said is it open to negotiation considering that the job application clearly stated that that wasn't an option it's very difficult in any role at Asheville to do work from home. You can't film a tire montage or film me from your house it makes the rest of the team's life harder and and you therefore aren't available to assist the team with anything. Whether you're in the video room, whether you're doing transport, whether you're doing logistics, whether you're in operations, you can't work from home. If you work somewhere like this, where we're dynamic, we're pushing forward, we're trying to expand, you have to be here and you have to be involved and you are paid accordingly because I am aware of the surroundings here and I am aware that it is a container which has been refurbished and I am aware what this job requires of you and the hours on a daily basis so there are people who are what right for the role one of them's filming now isn't it hamza hamza show us your camera skills can you do a little nod there like up and down <laughs> there are people who are capable and are a good fit for the job we're just having a bit of a challenge trying to find them at the moment i've got to jump on another few zooms and then we have a meeting don't run off mikey and then we have a meeting at the refurbishment project. It was meant to be at 12 p.m. and the client has asked to move it to 5 p.m. because they would like to bring the rest of their team down. Good luck editing that, boy. Yes, Mikey, talk Five to me. The Type 1's still leaving the yard very quickly. We're gonna need to organize a couple of trains, but thankfully it gave us some space. So we cleaned out one corner of this bay and this is a material the Arctics have dropped in which is a plum slate. Now this is for a special job, which is starting in a couple of days. In that job, we have to put in a load of 6F5 to build up the ground level. Then this material's got to go in, but this has to be uh, reloaded onto the tippers. So the client, we've charged them to bring it in, storage, put it on the lorries. But on a job like this, it's more important to get the job done and completed on time as opposed to, you know, try to save every single penny because finishing late has damages which will cost you more than trying to save a penny at the beginning. Three minutes to five. Client should be here any second. Just taking a walk around to see if anything has happened which I don't know of since I was last here. Just looking at the screeded floor makes a huge difference in all these rooms. We are ready for our first fix. We just want some answers off the client today. Remember a couple of weeks back, I told you about the light features that we wanted to put in these areas. If the client can approve those lights in the recesses, we can begin to run cables and build out. Over into the bedroom. It's a lot darker in here now the loft structure and roof is finished. We've started the work in this bathroom. We have built out the timber frame and the gibberet flushing system. And we have put insulation where the shower is gonna be. And we've started to run pipes into the other bedroom. Work's also started in this ensuite. Once again, toilet frame and shower. On the ground floor, the aircon units are connected and we've started running the Ventaxia, which is going to be a fresh air system. This basically means that in the house, if all the windows and doors are closed, you will have a constant supply of fresh air going into all of the rooms so it doesn't get stuffy. You can see where the air is going to be pushed into the room. You saw us do this previously at the sticker man's house. In the basement, also ready for first fix, but something very nice. The staircase is now in. Now this staircase has been built so it can be tiled. So if the client were to change their mind now and want a carpet, we'd have to rethink how we would do it because they've got a straight edge on them in order that we can fit the tiles and mitre the edges. Oh, fox in the garden. 
I fear that's going to be an ongoing problem at this property. From this view, you can see the lovely roof completed. We need to do some snagging and the gutters and downpipes. But other than that, the building is watertight. The windows are being manufactured at the moment and hopefully they'll be with us in five weeks. It's Wednesday and I'm in the yard. Time is uh, 2.02. I spent about three hours earlier on top of the water tower. I was by myself, I didn't have my DJI, used my phone. I was trying to think and strategize. There was too much noise going on in the office, too many things happening. And I thought, Do you know what? I need to have a bird's eye view. And what better place for a bird's eye view than being up on the water tower, having a chance to think. Then as I came down, I bumped into salesman Sam, who has got an order for concrete blocks. Now, we've generally got a lot of them in stock, or we're always building or taking things apart, but we have an order for, I believe, 60 of them, which Ben is going to deliver on the flatbed. So we have a section here, but some of these are damaged from, you know, taking knocks against other blocks when we're moving them around. So we have to assess everything that we have here decide which ones can go out and we're going to start pouring concrete blocks again every day until we make up the blocks which are needed however once we've poured the block we really don't want to give it to the client unless it's had like 14 days for it to cure so we're gonna to have to get started with it right away and sam was like what do i do if they want it all right away i said well you start dismantling our bays as i keep saying to the lads here everything is for sale if they need it from our bay, dismantle the bay, and when we pour them, we'll put it back in our bay. So, what, so he's, I can see he's coming, he's just slowing down, waiting for a signal, I guess. Yeah, he's going to go past, and now he's going to begin to back in. And the second he backs in, that machine will start to offload. The clock is ticking. That machine was 40 grand cheaper, but I bought two buckets just for emergencies. One day, the train backed in, and he went to do the first bucket, and the bucket cr it just snapped. If I couldn't have offloaded that train, I would have got a 25 grand fine. Drop the bucket, connect the other bucket, hydraulics, check it, go, 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 go. Then put the other bucket in the repair shop, gouge it, weld it, repair it, make it stronger, put it on the side next time it happens. You could be in here all day and just walk around and we do track walks and maintenance like spring, clip, there we go, spring, clip, spring, clip. It's Thursday and I'm in the yard. The Sun newspaper, the Times, and the Metro are here. We are talking about the show, Building Impossible with Daniel Asheville, which is coming out, and they're taking a look around the yard, and I'm giving them a tour. And, well, look here, I see the train is about to back in. Don't panic, don't panic. My face is hurting. Logbook came for Sam's Amarok, yes, AS14 rep. And I still have AS17 rep and AS19 rep. So you should know my plans there. I've got two more plates for reps who are gonna start at Asheville. And you saw us last week, we had Ben wearing the head cam. We now have Sam on site with the head cam on as we're doing a large 140 cube concrete pour. Heard back from the client after the meeting at the refurbishment project on Tuesday after we presented the options. It's like a hundred grand to upgrade the infrastructure going to the property to go from 100 amp to 160 amp incoming. Because at 100 amp, if you were to turn on everything in the entire house on full blast at the same time, we're at the limits of 100 amp and the fuse may trip. The client has gone with the decision they're going to stick with the 100 amp because it's unrealistic that everyone's gonna turn everything on at the same time and not turn it off and a hundred thousand pound irrespective of your resources is too much money to upgrade for something which may happen once every 10 years 
So now we can get on with our electrical work. We had some decisions made on the lighting. We need to fit the cable trays throughout the property. We have a Zoom on Monday with the electrical engineer who is producing the plans. We're gonna get as much as we can done at the 15 million pound house this week so we can really put some horsepower into the refurbishment project, get this first fix done, and then we can start building the MF structures for the ceilings and start closing up the walls. Friday morning, I managed to have an MRI uh, today in the bigger MRI machine and not have the same episode that I had on Saturday when I tried to bench press it off me because I got super claustrophobic. Here are my results here. I mean, I have no idea what that means, but they gave me a CD, so I just thought I'd share it. I received an email from a long-standing client and that client, they have been using us since the very start. They've always been loyal and when there are challenges between our teams, we get together, we work it out. Two days ago, basically saying, look, we've got a problem and a company who we keep coming up against, we know them, we work with them, the same company that will call me and say, hey, that was our job. What are you doing there? And I'll say, okay, I didn't know it was your job. That same company, knowing it's our job, seeing our lorries there, they've gone in there and they've undercut the rates by 55 pound a load. I know they're not busy. Nobody's busy. So they, mu they must be desperate. They're doing the muck for cheaper than people were doing it when I started doing this all those years ago. My client and friend, he was like, look man, it's 55 pound a load. There's like hundreds of loads to come out the job. I'm telling you because I'm trying to work this out. He's not asking me to drop the rate. We can't afford to drop the rate. He is a great client, but doing that, we're just setting fire to money, like we're burning money. They can't afford to do it. I know they can't. They don't even have any lorries. They sub the work to other people and then they tip in their tip. And they've deliberately gone after the work because they known it was ours. They've cut the throat on the rate and now it is a race to the bottom. Do you know what? I'm just gonna have to say thank you for letting me know. I appreciate it and I'm gonna have to let it go. The work isn't profitable. So we'll just have to wait and continue the relationship. No hard feelings. People need to do what is best for their business at any given time. And then I guess we'll see what happens in the future. But I will not get involved in a race to the bottom. I won't lose a job over two or three quid or five pound. I won't. But that just, just doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Unfortunate. But that is business. Weather's brutal, man. Saturday morning, on our own again. I'm on the way to Land Rover to discuss a new car. Now, this isn't the car what I spoke about, what I'm trying to get on the list for, which isn't available yet. This is completely different, nothing to do with that. This is another car. This morning, I spent time with David, Jonathan, and Sam updating the drawings for the refurbishment project based on the meeting we had. Now, there has been a change in the basement in regard to where the bar is because they would like to get round to the bar from both sides. And also, at the other side, we are narrowing the opening and we are gonna put glass doors there because they're gonna be a poker table and they wanna be able to close the glass doors to ensure that they can play poker there and the noise doesn't transfer into the rest of the room. Ground floor was fine. On the first floor, there was a change in that the wardrobe, which was in the master bedroom, has been removed and now there's a seating area. And now in the wardrobe, uh, this is actually our error, there's an additional steel which has gone in, which the structural engineer put in after we had done the layout for the room. So now we are redesigning the cupboards in that area to make sure we make best use of space. And on the other side, there was a part where one part of the wardrobe kicked out. But now we look at it, we feel it's a lot better to have the entire wall pushed out. Therefore, we get a nice flush line from that point onwards. Lastly, once again, down to us, you saw on the first floor, we built all the partitions from block work. As we had initially thought these were gonna be built from stud work, we haven't updated the drawings yet. So 
So that also needs to be done. You need to continually update the drawings throughout the project. One, so everyone's on the same page and when you send them to people, what they can see is what's on site. And two, at the very end of the project, we're gonna hand over as-built drawings. This is basically so the client has a full record of everything which is done within the property. Now, if you wait till the very end to do this, you that there's stuff which you could miss so the drawings are always ongoing and being developed as the project progresses and evolves. Mm, boardroom. You ain't about to make a V8 commercial, are you? As far as I'm aware, no. I'm interested in the electric Vogue. We've actually got a waiting list already going for it. I'm at the boardroom at um, Lookers Land Rover in Park Royal. I've done a deal. The guys here really good, looked after me really well. I'm going for a Defender again, commercial, but I've made a few additions and changes. The original Defender, what I drive around all the time now, Simon Urban was good enough to get hold of that for me because at the time there was a massive shortage and I just decided on a whim, look, I need a new car. But this time I'm taking the time to order it and the specification is a specification that I want. Like I've removed the central bench seat in the middle. I really wanted a sunroof, but I don't do a sunroof. I've got the head up display, I've got leather seats, just a few bits to make it that bit more comfortable. It's not going to look any different from the outside, but it's just for me because I spend a lot of time in it. I do about 25,000 miles a year in my work car. Now, the car I'm currently driving is two and a bit years old. So the warranty is going to run out in about nine months and the Defenders are such a long order time, they're 12 months. When the new Defender arrives, I will chop in the old one or sell it privately. Now, because the Defenders are in such short supply, the car is more or less worth what I paid for it. I'm gonna have a new car, which I'm gonna find more comfortable, and it's gonna cost me the same thing a month. So not a lot's gonna change because it is a car which is fit for purpose. Good negotiations, feel well looked after, great experience, and I'm gonna look forward to my new car coming. Heading to the yard, and I just had a message from Meds, who today is still stressing. A couple of them cutaways there, which are not Meds but stress him out even more. And my personal website, danielashville.com, is now live after we've made a couple of tweaks. This site doesn't sell anything. It doesn't really do a lot, but it's something which is kind of like a box tick exercise. The TV show, however, 160 countries or however many countries it's gonna be in, there are gonna be a lot of people who don't use media platforms like YouTube, Instagram, uh, TikTok, and they're gonna go online and search my name. So I need to have somewhere where they can land and it provides information if they you know, wanna get hold of my management or they want to learn a little bit more about me. That's the only purpose it serves. It doesn't do anything, it's not gonna promote me, it's just information, here it is, this is what he does. So when you get a chance, have a look. And right now, Meds is fretting because Whenever we put a new website out and I say it, people go on it and they scrutinize the website and they do all the NASA supercomputer and they start doing all these checks and meds will read every single comment that you put or if you say good or bad, he will compile them and he will challenge every single one and whatever you say, he'll try to fix it because he takes it personal like that, which is a good thing for me, but a bad thing for his Sunday afternoon. <laughs> In the yard, having a look around. The type one is going down, going down, going down. Now we've had to have a little move around because we want an even amount of pressure on each side of the wall. So we've cleared the material, so we got an even amount, and then we put the material into the corners. That's the slate over there, which was meant to go out towards the end of the week. It didn't, that job's now on Tuesday, but we don't want uneven weight on this wall to push it in any direction. It's nice and strong, but if we can prevent pressure on one side and not the other, we always try to do that. Rest of the material has all been moved. The sand is all together. The shingle is all together. Sometimes when we're offloading the train, we have to offload in other parts of the yard and then we don't often get to move it and then we end up loading where it is. How are we doing? Yeah, doing well. How are you? What are you doing? Rubbish. Oh, just picking, yeah? Oh, okay. 
All right, good. One of the lads is going around opening all the lorries, going into the passenger footwell, taking out all the rubbish and just walking around the yard, picking up bits that get blown in the wind to ensure that yet the yard is spotless. And I can see loads of tippers loaded. Five tippers loaded with zero to four sand and we got five tippers loaded with four to 20 shingle. Those tippers are all going to the same place first thing in the morning and they can tip at half six. Then all of them are leaving there and they're going down to a job in West London where they're gonna do five load of haulage each and they're gonna do another load at the end of the day. So Monday on the tippers is busy. Concrete not so busy but Concrete normally gets busier towards the end of the week, but on Monday when you get in, things tend to change with concrete because then people call you and say, can you quickly do some now? Can you quickly do some tomorrow morning? We're optimistic, sun shining, drying out the yard. Thus far, Saturday is getting well. What's where, where, where are you going in that John Travolta shirt and them sunglasses? Just did the duty. He's very happy with the position and the Range Rover. Uh, he works five days a week, doesn't have to work Saturdays. Why have you got my head of operations out doing nonsense? Do you want to see how many drinks he's had? He won't, he won't be in Monday. Where are you? I'm at work. Why are you in the yard? You don't do nothing when you're there anyway. So why are you there now and there's no one else there? I've got videos coming out tomorrow. I've got work to do. I need to prepare for Monday. We can't all be swanning around at the weekend. We had two spare tickets and I said there's no point wasting the ticket on you. Right. Look, look how happy he is, look how happy he is. Like, like, he's like a kid in a sweet shop, but he said, I've never been treated like this before. He said, four course meal. A four course meal at the cafe on Enfield High Road. What four course meal did he have there? All right, mate. Terry has gone football with Michael O'Donovan on Saturday afternoon. So they've obviously had to call me and give me some rubbish. So apparently Michael O'Donovan has interviewed Terry and offered him a job. But the last time Michael and I spoke, he said that Terry gave him a CV and the first line was once upon a time. So <laughs> I, wish, I wish both of them the best of luck on their Saturday afternoon. And we'll see how it goes when they get to White Hart Lane and they gotta go through the turnstiles. The time is 5.53 and I've uh, come round to the car wash just to try and clear my head and I've managed to forget to put the memory card back in my DJI. How you doing boss? So give her in the car a wash. You know them life hacks there when you go car wash to clean your work boots and because they're waterproof, you're nice. When I get back to work, I'm trying to prepare for a presentation I'm making um, as you know, I'm a fan of rail, and I'm gonna be talking at the Rail Freight Group on uh, 15th of November, talking about uh, the impact that digital media has on modern day businesses. So stuff like this, I like to make sure that I'm fully prepared and like to make sure I do my best. For me, stuff like that's a big deal. So I'm gonna get back, map out some notes, and form it together and then speak to meds and begin to put together the PowerPoint presentation. And when I'm talking, I can just go click, click, click it is going to be a long weekend but it's necessary so i'm ready on monday tomorrow morning eight o'clock i'll be in the gym training legs and that's it for Asheville weekly episode 150 click here for the Asheville website click here to subscribe to our channel click here to see an Asheville video you may not have seen before and click down here for last week's episode which was number 149